Uh, Rupert Reid, uh, the Prime Minister, as we know, was repeating a lot of the promises already made about infrastructure, but it is one of the big issues in this part of the world, isn't it? What do you do about the jobs that are needed, the roads that are surely needed, and the houses that are needed? Well, of course, central to our pitch in this election is our transport offer, which is to massively improve public transport, make cycling in Cambridge the best place in Europe for cycling. And to do that, we also need to reduce, not increase, the amount of vehicles on our roads. We want to see more freight, for example, moving by rail rather than by road. And rather than this polluting and dangerous expansion of the A14. We want to see more resources going into rail and into particular safety improvements on the A14 and into, and into making local economies work better, into making it less necessary for people to travel as far as they travel at the moment to get to work, to go from one place to another, etc. So it's really about trying to produce a sustainable green transport policy for the future. And we think that's going to be very attractive to the voters of Cambridge. Julian Huppert, is there a sustainable green thought in the current government coalition? Or otherwise? Absolutely. We've seen more investment in rail, for example, than any time since the Victorian era. We've finally seen the end of the above inflation rises that we saw year on, uh, after year uh, under Labour. Not everything has gone the way we want. There's a big tension within the government. We've had David Cameron talking about trying to cut out the green crap. Um, I agree, actually, with, with some of what Rupert said. We do need to get more freight onto rail. We, we've done that. We're building more infrastructure to be able to do that. We've seen a massive increase in renewables, more investment, about twice as much uh, electricity coming from renewables. So there's really good progress. Again, there's a long way to go. And I think that applies to a lot of these things. Daniel was criticising the city deal. It's a billion pounds altogether, which is fantastic. It's not going to solve... 100 million first phase, Yeah, Julian. 100 million to start with and the rest of it later. It's not going to solve everything, but it's more than we've ever had before. There's a long way to still to go. What we have to avoid is what we've seen in the past. I actually just got the figures recently, perhaps Daniel would want to, to comment on this, actually, because there was something called negative subsidy, where um, council tenants' money was taken from Cambridge by Labour to be spent elsewhere in the country. Over their 13 years, that's £120 million. I just got the figures yesterday. Let's get your response Taken on that, away Daniel, from Cambridge. And, and you, you're that could have built of, new council you're, you're critical of the city deal, but hasn't Cambridge City Council, which is, of course, run by the Labour Party, hasn't that signed up to the city deal? Oh, we have, because we'll take what's, what's on offer, but we want more. And I'll just go back to Julian's point. Anyone who was living in a council house in Cambridge in the last under the Labour government will have seen the, the massive improvements to the housing stock in Cambridge, and I'm incredibly proud of those. So we've seen, we saw far, far better improvement with money coming from the Labour government than we've seen at, at any other stage. But I'd just like to go back so, to the so A14 but, Daniel, briefly, which is... Which is taken a, away? Uh, Julian, if we want to discuss housing finance, I'm very pleased to do that. £20 billion went into improving council housing in this country, which is really important. But on the A14, let's remember David Cameron today is bragging about this, but only two years ago he was telling BBC Look East, no tolls, no road. This is a Prime Minister who just basically makes it up as he goes along. You can't trust anything Go he says. Governments change their minds. You, yeah. well, yours I, did. And I suspect that after the election, you may well see them rowing back on the A14 again, because I haven't seen where the money's been identified for this. So I don't think you can trust very much this Prime Minister tells us. It was a PR stunt today. We've seen them before. We'll see them again. I'm afraid that's the way the election goes. Yeah, but isn't that what it's about? And, and where are your leaders with their, with their PR stunts? Well, this is part of the problem with the, with the politics in general at the moment. The, the coalition, and particularly, of course, the Liberal Democrats, who said one thing before the election and then did completely different things afterwards, people don't believe what is being said. And what we've got to try and do is be realistic about what we're promising in the future. And I think you'll find that Labour's offers are costed and believable. Rupert, your leader was actually the last to be in this uh, studio just a couple of, of weeks ago. Uh, it is about, uh, is it not, quite uh, to a large extent, about the leaders, what people nationally think of them. What, what about yours? Is she striking a chord? Well, I think Natalie Bennett and also our MP, Caroline Lucas, are going down extremely well. Natalie's going to be visiting us again here in Cambridge in March and then again in April during the election campaign. We're very excited about that. And we're very excited about the radical policies, not just believable, but radical policies that the Greens are putting forward, policies that Labour wouldn't dare to put forward, like a wealth tax, like making the minimum wage into a living wage, like actually returning our public services into public ownership, having a joined-up railway network that's in public hands. These are the kinds of things that Labour doesn't dare to do anymore. They're absolutely key to the green appeal.